Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here and today I'm taking a look at Monochroma. This is a puzzle platformer title, uh, a highly stylized one at that, that just popped up on Steam. Now this game, this game has been in the making for a long time and it's been under development by a group called Nowhere Studios. Now they're a small indie team from Turkey and th this game has gone through Kickstarter where it was successfully funded and then greenlit as well and it was originally supposed to be released on December 2013 however it was delayed until now. So now that it's finally here let's take a look at it and see what it's all about. Now of course as I said it's a puzzle platformer and as far as puzzle platformers go, there's a lot of variety here. There's a lot of challenge in the puzzles themselves. I've noticed, in fact, that the different chapters, which all in all was supposed to last 90 minutes each, however, I'm pretty terrible at platforming, so I did take significantly longer than that to clear the chapters. Nevertheless, uh, I found the uh, puzzles themselves to be decently challenging, and there is a good difficulty scaling. It seems really easy at the beginning, but it does scale very nicely as you go along, and none of the puzzles seem to be repeated in any way. While you might find yourself using similar elements as you go along, you definitely don't repeat whole sections again, and you don't see the same art all over again either, which is good, because this game is very big on art. In fact, it's one of those games that is trying to push for the idea that games can be an art form, which is something I definitely agree on. However, I think as far as games go, you got to remember, games and art are still games and art together, so there must be a balance between the two, and this is a game that I'm not entirely sure has struck that balance particularly. So let's have a look at it. Well, as far as art goes, there's this really nice setting. It's supposed to be a 1950s dystopia that's covered in this really nice uh, film noir kind of aesthetic. Uh, with little accents of red here and there to kind of bring out the whole stylistic aspect of it really nicely. Uh, it's definitely something that we consider pretty engaging, at least visually, uh, because there's a lot of things going on in the background, and there's definitely very, very uh, detailed settings as it goes along. And there's no dialogue. Well, there's really nice sound assets, you know, things from rain to little footsteps and things like that. You you find yourself sometimes having to stop and just look at the background because there's a lot of things going on and trying to absorb the story through the background. Now as far as the actual story goes, starting off of course you have your main character and his little brother who happens to injure himself pretty badly right at the beginning and you then spend the rest of the game trying to carry him along. Now, it's not entirely clear exactly where you're going to or how you're going to get there at the onset, but what I can tell you is that you do have to always be babysitting, in a sense. And it seems that that is what they're trying to go for, where you have to play the role of the bigger brother looking after the smaller one, because he is completely helpless. So, at certain points, you have to place him around somewhere on the map or somewhere on the level in order to complete certain objectives, because while carrying him you can't run as fast and you can't jump as high, so there are certain things you have to leave him behind in order to do. The problem is he doesn't, of course being a small child, he doesn't just sit anywhere, he has a bit of an issue with darkness. So it's not just any lit area, there are specific places where light is shining down and you can place him there, and that allows you to carry on. This is usually tied in with the actual platforming puzzle itself in some way, shape or form, and sometimes can also lead to some interesting timing puzzle uh, aspects as well. But this game is definitely far from perfect and there are some issues, and some of it may be a deal breaker for you. So, first off, I'll start with the aesthetics. While it is a very nice looking game, it's not high graphics fidelity, but it is definitely visually engaging. The problem I find is that some of the aesthetics do interfere with the gameplay elements to a certain extent. In fact, it does add an additional level of difficulty to platforming because, as you can see here, even in the bright maximum brightness setting, I'm having issues seeing some of the platforms, and it's really hard to be precise if you can't see what you're aiming for all that well. 
Now, it could just be me, but I do see there's going to be a bit of a problem with actually seeing what you're aiming for. At the same time, there's also these chase sequences that go along with the game, and they do feel a little anticlimactic. It could be because you, as so long as you, you clear the puzzle a certain way, you're never really going to get caught. It is pretty difficult to get caught by the goon that's chasing you. However, the music itself doesn't add to that whole intensity of the uh, of the chase, and that's assuming that the game actually loads the music, because I have noticed a, a bug with the actual music where it does fail to load many times. Uh, usually after you have died, for example, and then you're loading back into the, the level again, sometimes the music just fails to load, and it does lead to a pretty immersion-breaking experience with a goon chasing you and there's just dead silence. Not exactly a, what I'd call a plus point. The platforming itself is a little bit too unforgiving at times as well, because uh, as far as I can see, the amount of leniency given for actual aiming, for example aiming for ledges and whatnot, does seem to be very, very narrow, and trying to aim for those, especially when you can't see very well, is making it unnecessarily difficult. At the same time, the controls themselves do take some getting used to because they do feel imprecise. Even though they technically aren't, they do feel that way, mainly because it is a different setup than you might be used to. I'm actually using the arrow keys um, in order to do this. And it's not something I'm really used to, and there's no rebindable controls that from what I can tell. So you're kind of stuck with what you're given. And they do take a long time to get used to, especially because it's kind of... yeah. Uh, until you practice enough, you're not really going to know exactly how much to hold up to jump, or how much to do this and that. Or exactly where you need to jump from, because sometimes it's really, really difficult to tell. Additionally, the uh, game just loads straight into the opening sequence on... The, from the get-go, so you don't actually load into a menu, you load straight into the opening sequence of the game. And that can be a problem, because when you're talking about settings such as brightness, resolution, all these things that I probably would want to look at before starting to play, is not available to you from the beginning. I understand that the developers probably just want people to get straight into the game, but in some cases, it's probably not the best idea, and this is definitely one of those examples. Lastly, I'd like to talk about a couple of bugs that I've noticed. And uh, one of these things do involve... It's not a severe problem. I think if you have a decent enough machine, it's not going to be a problem for you. But the lighting, when there's significant amount of lighting effects going on on the screen, they do cause significant amounts of frame drops. Now, I've had a constant 45 to 50 frames per second, which is not great, but it's decent enough for this sort of game. However, when there's a lot of lighting going on, to the, screen, on the screen, it does drop pretty quickly down to 30 frames per second or less, which can be a bit of a problem, especially when you're going through very fast-paced timing puzzles. You want to be accurate and you want to be precise, but you get this lag that suddenly comes in. Not the best time, definitely. And of course, there are a couple of issues with the collision detection and uh, with uh, the physics. And if you're going to see right here, in this part, you actually have to use this robot here. And while it's not something that I was able to continually reproduce, this, this bug did end up flinging the character off into certain death in the water, which is probably not intentional. So there are a bit of issues with collision detection, and that, I think, was one of them. But yes, it, it's definitely not what I would call perfect by any sense, And but the, the balance in the game does seem a little bit off in terms of balancing aesthetics with gameplay. So is it any good? This one is really just mixed feelings for me. I mean, as far as first impressions go, the art style really does Get, it does engage me pretty well. I do like this art style that they're going for, and I'm interested to see where the story goes to. And on that basis alone, I would buy this and I would play it. However, if you're looking for a good platforming game, this is not it. The platforming, while 
interesting is not what I would say is the strongest point of this game. And unfortunately, when it comes to a, you know a game with good aesthetics and good gameplay, I would like to see a balance between the two, and I just don't think that this game hits that balance particularly well. It seems to be more a case of the art definitely and the story definitely is a good strong point of the game and the game player has suffered as a result. So there you have it folks, this has been Panzer taking a look at Monochroma, now available on Steam for $19.99 or your regional equivalent. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.